It was the day of the feast of St. Marcel. We'll be here again in Cincinnati. And Pope and Martyr. And a few considerations today on the you know, St. Saint Marcel, the Father of the Son of the Ghost. Amen. St. Marcel himself, of course, Pope and Martyr. But today, consideration of Archbishop Marcel of Feff, who was named after Pope St. Marcel and uh, was uh, born in northern France in 1905 and was the bishop who preserved the Catholic faith in the 60s, the 70s, the 70s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, and, uh, you know, and passing it on to our time. And uh, in the seminary when I was in, in Monona, I was in the seminary in Monona, Minnesota, they have an altar dedicated to St. Marcel, Pope St. Marcel, and in the back of the altar is carved the tree of Jesse. And the tree of Jesse, which shows the line of promise. When we consider the line of promise, you notice the line of promise is a line of the that our Lord Jesus Christ is truly the physical Son of Adam. Of course, everyone's the Son of Adam, so that's easily done. But he was also the Son of Noah, and everyone's the Son of Noah, also easily done. All human beings on earth are the sons of those two. But he's in the Son of Abraham, and the Son of Isaac, and the Son of Jacob, and the Son of David. And that the prophecy said he would be the sons of these men. And so it needed to be proven historically and physically that Jesus Christ, the man who was born 2,000 years ago, truly came from David. He was truly the son of David. He was physically the son of David and the line of promise. And the history of the Old Testament is a double history. It's a history of all mankind and his journey away from God. And in that 4,000 year period, waiting for Jesus Christ to come and redeem the entire human race. But in that 4,000 year journey, the Old Testament is a journey also the story of the line of promise. That God made a promise to Adam, your son, you have sinned, but your son shall be the redeemer. And there shall be a line, an unbroken line, from you all the way to the Redeemer, and that the line shall be protected throughout history. So the Jewish people are called the chosen people. They are called the sacred people of God because these are the people from which God chose to raise the Messiah. These are the people of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the people of the Mother of God, and the people of the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ. And there is, a, and that God chose to be born of the of Israel, the son of. Uh, Isaac, he chose to be born of Israel, and he chose to be the, the son of the, the Israel, the Jacob, who is called Israel. He chose to be of the tribe of Judah. He chose to be of David. There's a physical line of promise, and it was maintained throughout the entirety of the Old Testament. All things that are in the Old Testament are also in the New. So just as there was a line of promise in the Old Testament, so there will be a line of promise in the New Testament. And this is taught to us by the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Apostles. What do they say? I will be with you all days, even unto the consummation of the world. These days means a period of our lives. I will be with you, the every generation, I will be with you. The Blessed Virgin Mary said, all generations shall call me blessed. A generation is about 20 years. And that I will be with you all days until the very consummation of the world. There will be my priesthood, says the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the priesthood he passed on to his twelve apostles. There will be my faith, which he passed on to his twelve apostles. And these things will be in all days, even to the consummation of the world. And I wonder whether the church teaches that there will be perpetual successors of St. Peter, and also perpetual successors of the other eleven apostles. But particularly, the perpetual success of St. Peter in every age from the time of St. Peter's death in 64 AD, where he died in Rome being crucified upside down, on the same day that St. Paul was beheaded. Um, from that day until the ending of the world, there shall be perpetual successors of Peter. This is the dogma of our church. So there will never be massive gaps between popes. There will never be a single gap between valid bishops. So that there will be a physical chain of authority and a physical chain of, of, of priesthood passed on in the New Testament. But the way that the physical chain of the New Testament priesthood is passed on is by the imposition of hands. So that between my head and our Lord Jesus Christ, 
There is an unbroken chain of physical touching of hands to head, hands to head, hands to head, hands to head, down the last 2,000 years. An unbroken chain. And this has been passed on, and hence we trace our lineage back to our Lord Jesus Christ, back to the apostles. But this is the physical chain of the New Testament. The physical chain of the New Testament is passed on by the imposition of hands. But this is not sufficient in the New Testament. There will not only be a physical line of promise, in the Old Testament it was only physical. That there were, there were physical line of promise from Adam all the way down. Although St. Robert Brethren points out, while there is a physical line of promise in the Old Testament, there was also a spiritual line of promise. That is, that God never allowed the church of the Old Testament to lose its faith. And never allowed the church of the Old Testament be, to become invisible. It never became invisible, and it never completely lost its faith. Many Protestants, 500 years ago, said, look to the Old Testament, and there were many times in which there were no prophets in Israel. God said, there are no prophets in Israel. All the prophets are wicked. All the prophets are doing evil. Ezekiel chapter 34. All the, the shepherds are wicked. The shepherds are evil. And so we have wicked shepherds, and we have bad shepherds, and we have wicked prophets. And so that there are many times in the Old Testament, say the Protestants, when the prophets disappeared. And many times when the priesthood seemed to disappear. But St. Robert Welling points out, no, there was never a time when it ever disappeared. Even in the Old Testament. There was always a faithful prophet. There was always a faithful priest. In every age, from the time of Adam, the priest, who though he abandoned God for a brief period, he never left the faith, and he remained faithful. And then, and, the, and then it continued through Noah, and then it continued all the way down. So that when there was only one family on earth, Adam, Eve, they were faithful. When there was only one family on earth, Noah and his three sons, they were faithful. And then when they spread, there were many, many, and the majority of them became unfaithful, but the religion remained intact, and the faith remained intact throughout the whole Old Testament, and the faith will remain intact by a generation of the tree of Jesse throughout the entirety of the New Testament. When we arrive at the 20th century, and the greatest apostasy that's ever happened in the history of our church, reaching its zenith, reaching its perfection, and its completion, during this time also, there is still a bishop that holds the faith, not just ordained, the physical passing on, but there are many bishops ordained, many priests ordained. The physical line of promise continues in the New Testament in a broader way than the old line of promise. The old line of promise was just one man all the way down every generation until you got to Jesus Christ. And they are listed in the book of the Gospel of St. Matthew and the Gospel of St. Luke. And, and so that they're listed there and that they, those are the physical line of just those men that are the ancestors of Jesus Christ physically. But in the New Testament, the physical passing on is by the hands. And so there are many, many bishops, and there are many, many priests throughout every generation continuing on the physical line of promise. But the spiritual line of promise must also be continued in every generation. And so that in every generation there will be at least one faithful bishop. And every generation will be at least one faithful priest. There will be at least one faithful member of the of the, the lower priesthood, the deacons and, and so on, and there will be at least one faithful faithful throughout every single generation from Ab, from Jesus Christ's uh, resurrection until in Pentecost until the very ending of the world. Also the visible structure of the church will remain intact. There will be a visible church. There will still be priests even if they have to go in hiding. There will still be bishops if they have to go in hiding. The first three hundred years the, the, the popes did not dress in clerical garb. They had to hide amongst the people. And yet there was known the head of the church. He lives in a house in the middle of Rome in a secret location. And he runs the church. Even as we go through the, the history of the saints, such as St. Saint Marcel, who was one of those popes in the 200s, who was put to death in the time of the height of persecution. He never was able to wear his clerical garb in public. He had to secretly go around in public pretending as though he was a farmer or a, some kind of street vendor, and yet he ran the Catholic Church and he consecrated and ordained priests. It always lists how many priests, how many bishops consecrated in the month of December by the Pope when he was Pope. We know the years that he was a Pope, how long he was Pope, where when he lived in Rome, and he was put to death, and yet he had to be go in hiding. The church was visible, and the visibility of the church remains until the ending of time, including in our times. So there will be a visible, physical structure of the church that shall be maintained. Pope, bishop, uh, priests, deacons, and faithful. And there shall also remain the spiritual structure of the church. That is, there shall be the maintaining of faith 
in every generation. And this is my divine promise. God promised, I will be with you all days, even unto the consummation of the world. So that if we are only a few people in the world that have the faith, and we lose it, if we lose that faith, the faith shall not be lost. Another shall take it up. If we drop the banner, another shall take it up. We see that throughout history. That there are many times when bishops and priests drop the banner of the faith. What happens? Another one picks it up. It's in the old days in battle, when a man would run the banner in battle. If he would fall down, he would lose the banner, and another would grip it up before it hit the ground. And so this must be happening at every age. And then Marshal Lefebvre was a bishop of the 19, uh, 1940s up until he died in 1991, who maintained the faith without any compromise, who passed his faith on to his spiritual children in the Society of St. Pius X. And he passed it on also, not only to his own spiritual children in the Society of St. Pius X, but all those who wished to receive that faith throughout the world, and was a beacon of the holding of the faith. And the faith must be continued after his death in 1991, and will be continued until the ending of the world. So that there must be faithful bishops, faithful priests, faithful, faithful, and a continuation of the church in every single age, including our age. And so we must make sure that we carry on the faith, and we have a responsibility to be the carriers of the line of promise. The priest must carry on the line of promise, and the faithful must also carry on the line of promise in the New Testament, because the New Testament is passed on to all those that are baptized, will pass on the line of promise, where they will not only baptize their children, not only make sure they're a priest for every age, but make sure that that faith is inviolate and held intact. We're now heading into another time of persecution right now. And as we into a time of persecution right now, we must make sure that the faith is preserved in us and carried on to the next generation. If we have to go underground again, closing the churches, making the religion illegal, laying down laws, making it impossible to live a Catholic life in public, we will maintain our faith, maintain our life, and be strong and still try to convert all the world as they did in the earlier times of persecution. Even in the age of persecution, what did they do? They continued to be apostolic. They continued to be one holy and Catholic. They continued to spread that faith even in the time of persecution and to pass on the torch of faith to the next generation. And remember that God will never allow the torch of faith to go extinct. He will never allow it to go extinct. So let's hold on to that torch of faith in our present time of crisis and keep it passed on from this generation unto the next. Let's bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.